for discussion of the importance of indoor air quality and Daikon ventilation solutions that will follow with it. My name is Nishal Rana. I'm the consulting sales engineer for the KZN region. Um, so we'd like to kick off the presentation and we will take off uh, any, we'll take any questions after the seminar is done. So enjoy and uh, hope you guys understand and come uh, come forth with a learning point after this. Thank you. Bye. So <clears throat> looking at the importance of air quality. Um, so, you know, these are the questions that we normally ask in the seminar. You can leave your questions at the end uh, with your relevant email addresses and we will come back to you as soon as we can. So kick off. So basically, you know, with the handling of air, we look at obviously changing the qualitative property of it, right? Apart from, you know, humidity, cooling, etc., the quality is actually quite important of the air. So if you look at the screen, you know, you see a rising sun. It's reflecting a small blue layer, which is our atmosphere, which is the breathable part of the air. Uh, and it's very tiny. It's about 10 kilometers in proportion to the Earth's size. So if we compare a soccer ball to this, uh, being only about 22 centimeters, and if we take a, to visualize it, take a tin foil and wrap that soccer ball, you will only have a layer of about 0 0.17 millimeters thickness of air. That's the thickness of the foil in relation to the soccer ball is what the atmosphere that is breathable in relation to the actual size of the earth, right? So, you know, from the uh, EEA, which is the European Environmental Agency, um, you know, to a point of how much of pollution is actually occurring um, in Europe and apart from COVID or, or before COVID came into the picture, um, in Europe, in Europe, they did a study on about 50, at about 520,000 people in Europe per year um, <laughs> are affected by poor quality air. Um, so the problem, the problem with air is the invisibility. So let's say, let's say, for example, um, you go and eat a meal. So you eat one kilograms of food per day. What does a person normally look for? They look for something organic. They look for something clean. Um, your vegetables are washed, it's not sandy, it's not dirty. You look for good quality in essence, right? You eat about, what, five times a day, five meals a day, five small meals, some people three. And even if you look at water, you wouldn't just go and get water from a dirty river and drink it straight away, right? Your body drinks about two liters, two kilograms, call it a water a day. We, and you drink water about 10, maybe 15 times a day. Um, and you look for quality of water. If you pour a glass of water and you see uh, ash particles or you see mineral salts or you see uh, pieces of charcoal or whatever the case is, you wouldn't drink it. You discard it and for new water. Now, we can touch and see these items that we need every day to survive, which is water and food, right? But what about air? The reason why people do not focus on air is because we <laughs> we automatically breathe. It's an involuntary response and we have uh, limited control on what air that we consume. And look at how much of how many times we use air. We use air approximately every second, every second, you, every second or two or three seconds. Call me a liar. You're breathing in and out. So why do we not strive for good quality air? So that's what basically the uh, presentation is going to actually be hinged about. Uh, there's just it in graphical form of what we actually, what I actually broke down for you guys. So I'll go back there. So you can just have a quick look at that. So essentially what I spoke about, food, water, air, right? So the outdoor, outdoor versus indoor air quality, right? So, you know, most people are aware that the that the outdoor pollution can impact their health, right? 
but the, what recourse do you take for it? So the poll, the poll done outside is that, is that if you look at particles itself, right? Even though an outside city area is polluted or it's highly populated, when studies were done, the pollution levels outside was still sort of an acceptable level to the pollution levels and an inside space, which is actually shocking because some people would think that they within the house can they free from or not free from dust, but they have less contamination particles in the area. Uh, whereas outside, it's the it's the open air and the movement of air and what we commonly call in air conditioning air changes, which makes the outside air better quality. So I'm going to be touching into I'm going to be going to something quite technical um, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, micro particles. Uh, I'll try and go as slow as possible so that some guys can can sort of click click on because it's relevant. Um, uh, to the to the slides that we're going to touch at the end. So if you get lost now, just just pause and go back if you have to, uh, because this is quite an important part. So um, outside particles are made up of particle matters, right? So um, if you look at if you look at uh, if you look at the diagram, that's the three types of particle matters that or the three sizes of particle matters that we're going to be focusing on. Uh, one being the 10 micrometer, the 2.5, and the one. Um, and they could all call relevantly PM10, PM2.5, PM1, right? So the particle matter itself, right? Um, PM2.5, which is, I'll go back to the slide, which is the middle one, right? Is classed as fine, as you can see. And coarse matters, which is PM10, is classed uh, from is classed at uh, 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 from the size. Yeah, that's the PM10 particles. You can see in relation, it's about uh, it's about five, maybe four times larger than the PM2.5s. Uh, but this will all make sense soon. So just get there. So in terms of uh, in terms of uh, fresh air, right? Which uh, many of your consultants um, will be dealing with Department of Health for hospitals or uh, churches or high occupancy areas. Um, you all know that the regulations are quite stringent in terms of the amount of fresh air that you're going to be getting in. Uh, rules have changed from 10 years ago as where openable windows were acceptable, um, and in some cases now they're not. Um, and obviously because, uh, because <laughs> the window surfaces are not uh, anymore a good rule to judge if mechanical ventilation is needed. Um, so the reason is because you cannot just rely on windows, right? Um, uh, hoping people will actually open the window, right? Because uh, there's, there's sometimes also not enough fresh air. And let's take a winter scenario, for example, right? In winter time, because the ambient air is quite cool, people don't open the windows, right? Same goes for, for the for the summertime, right? Uh, if you've got air conditioning running in your space, people don't open the windows. So windows is not an ultimate answer to, um, let's call it guaranteeing uh, good quality fresh air within the space, right? Um, you also have the other factor that, let's say you had a window and you had a burn area below it. Uh, or a highly polluted area below it, or you were in a very congested um, city area, uh, then the air coming in through those window quality is not even good. So you still have uh, that issue. And if you look at the average concentrations, one day concentrations of PM10, you can see like, for example, areas like Denmark, Italy, France, uh, they're all below the actual uh, Gazetta threshold. So just to put you in perspective of what the actual particle matter looks like, right? The real dimensions. It's a picture of uh, Brangelina uh, and zooming in. So I'll just do that again. So you can see, how many, I don't know exactly how many frames we're zooming in, but you can see that it's probably in the micro uh, regions. So if you look at Angelina's hair, we're going zooming in right into it. 
right, and pulling out a strand. So that's the real dimensions of the particle matter, right, in relation to the hair. So if you take a cross section of a strand of hair, that's what it looks like. It's 65 micrometers, right? That's a cross-sectional dimension of human hair. A PM10 particle is that large white circle. A PM2.5 is the one that's just shown now. And the PM1 is even smaller. So you can imagine a piece of hair, right? pull out a piece of hair from your head uh, and have a look at it and look at it in a section wise and you can just imagine how fine the particles are to actually be pm1 and pm2.5 even pm10 is small to the naked eye so why are we so concerned with the particle matter and the size of what we're looking at ever since covid um, there's been a need and a demand to actually enforce better quality of air uh, and, san and sanitization. Uh, and which, you, which everybody knows, I don't want to get in, I don't want to get too involved in the COVID philosophy of it. Uh, but the this is the pollution. So a particle matter 10 generally can be captured by your nose and pharynx, right? And your trachea, right? Which you can sort of, uh, eject it right, by coughing or by sneezing. So those dust particles that are on the PM10 region can get trapped within there. So your PM2.5 attacks your bronchia and your bronchioles, right? And the danger one is your PM1, right, which attacks your alveoli. And this is where the this is where the real issue uh, can get serious because you see our nose our nose has what you call natural filtration and the particles can be stopped but from pm 2.5 and pm1 they pass the nose right from pm1 they go into the alveoli and what's the problem when they go into the alveoli is that they actually jump into your bloodstream as you can see you can see your blood vessels connected to it right and smaller particles are always the most dangerous. And the problem we have is that PM1 particles form about 90% of pollutions uh, or, or pollutants, if you want to call it, right? Lighter particles, right, uh, stay longer in the air. So just to put you in perspective, so that is the whole point of showing you uh, Angelina's hair and showing you the cross section of what the relevant sizes are. And even one further, now showing you in the application of the human body, how this affects you. So besides the health risk for PM1, so your, you get your highest, highest mass, right, of particles in the air, which comes from uh, the 100 uh, nanometers to the 2.5 micrometers, which is your PM1 to PM2.5, you got your particles smaller than one micron, contributing to over 90% of the numbers. That's your PM1. And the lighter and smaller a particle is, as I explained earlier, the longer it stays in the air because it just carries on floating all around. So due to the, obviously for the harmfulness, frequency and, and permanence, the particles smaller or equal to PM1 need the highest attention. So 61% of the oh sorry, I skipped. 61 percent of people exposed to PM10, right? And you can see, um, sorry, this is the urban pollution uh, exposed to air pollutant concentration. This was done by the World Health Organization um, for the air quality guideline. So you can see by the table, they self-explanatory as to the amount of particle matters that affect um, affect us, and what what does it actually, or what does it actually cause to us, right? Um, 
So, you know, long exposures can cause an inflamed state, right? Um, and they also carry up for viruses. So I'll show you the next slide. So exposing yourself, as I explained, um, it, you know, it causes your body to be inflamed. So, you know, if you're living in a very polluted area, um, there's a possibility that uh, if you have a bird of inflammation, there's a possibility that uh, this is caused that in or if you this is caused by poor air quality, and also they carry a they, they carry a for viruses which we all are aware of. So the long exposure to an inflammatory state, what it can cause, uh, all the relevant cancer, your pulmonary diseases, your arthritis, diabetes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if you look at the western areas on your right hand side, um, which cannot handle the high pollution levels, uh, the east sides were more, more most effective in this particular case uh, of the study that was done. Um, and they carry viruses in the darker regions. Uh, there's more concentration of of like COVID, for example, and they started at the darkest regions. This is because uh, they have a weaker immune system. So um, having better quality of or being exposed to better quality of air, uh, in our opinion, uh, and by the studies that were undertaken, uh, proves that, or not proves that, but as it, it's theorized that uh, having a having being exposed to better air quality your whole life gives you a, a a better immune system um, and obviously become more resilient to uh, viruses. Just to look again at it, so this was this was done uh, on your right hand side and they looked at the days, um, you know, being exposed to the virus and what and what actually what actually was caused to it. So, um, what is the whole point of this whole of this whole theory or this whole, or this whole training that we've that we've discussed is that we need legislation to start helping us by enforcing correct filtration. So, an example of this is so um, a filter itself. This filter in particular can stop PM ten, PM two point five. But is but 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 a PM1 particle is permeable to it, um, and as I just explained earlier on, um, if 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 you guys have, if you guys are lost, please go back and maybe have a look at it. Uh, but the particle matter one is the one that's dangerous to us because, as I explained, it can go into your alveoli and into your bloodstream, and this is where the problems come about. So what do we do? Um, so in Europe, we look at particular filter selections, right? And it's not clear um, to the particle matters that we use. So I'll show you now exactly what I mean. So because of the legislations now, there's filters are rated. So you'll see the rating now. It does get a bit confusing, but just try and follow me. So your cross filter is your filters that you normally use, which are covered from your G1 to G4, your medium filters, which which capture more me medium particles, um, and obviously your fine filters, which is your F7 to F9. So it's now, now that that was how it used to be rated, right? Your G1 to F9, and now they're replaced by a group of classifications, or let's say there's a different range available, uh, which has classifications of particulate matter fractions, which is your PMs, your PM10, your PM2.5, your PM1 that we looked at earlier. So that's how, that's how now the filters are rated. So let me just get into it. So just try and follow, right? So if we say, for example, we have an F7 filter, right? And uh, we've got certain parameters that we have. The F7 filter it's itself, 
um, can stop, for example, 89% of the PM10, 67% of the PM2.5 and 49% of the PM1. So let me just go back there. So basically, if the problem or the, or the requirement was to achieve a class, as you can see on the left hand side, the minimum efficiency must be 50% reached. That means that because the PM1 while on an F7 filter rated to 49% efficiency, we cannot rate it for that, right? So what do you rate the filter? You rate it as a PM 2,5 at 67%, for example, but they always are rounded off to the fives, right? And below, so that's why the 67 we rounded off. When you rate it, you rate it at a PM 2,5, 65%. So what does that mean? That means it is 65% efficient for any particle matter which is 2,5 size and above. The higher you go in size, the better value you would get. So as you can see, you would be almost 90% efficient against a PM10 particle. That's basically the general ratings that we have on our filters. So there's auto air, which is filthy made up of contaminants, made up of particle matters from 10 to 50, made up of particle matters made from 2,5 to 40, made of particle matters from 1 to 30, right? And it goes onto a filter. What happens? So, in terms of the filtration, um, the particle matter 10, what 90% of it was stopped, so it's 90% efficient. The particle matter 2,5 scored 80%, and the particle matter 1 scored 70%. Right? So you got to you gotta look at what your auto A actually has or what your contaminant test shows it as. You gotta get your target indoor air, and then you gotta get your target filter for it. Right. So to say to say, for example, um, so we took we take the first we take the first filter, we rated it at 70 percent efficient for PM1. That's what we rated it for. Right. Your second filter that you put on the system was rated at 85 percent for PM1. And that and what was our achievement? Our target was 83% of PM1. So as you can see, the bottom, the bottom of the screen is your target, your bottom right hand corner is what you want to achieve in the space, right? That means a EPM1 70% failed for 2,5 and it failed for PM1. But EPM1 85% efficient passed on all target categories. So what needs to happen in the future? They're probably going to have uh, air monitoring systems to measure toxicity in the space. Um, all this all this technology already exists. I mean, you have, uh, uh, I think it's carbon monoxide filters. I think that the guys put in basements, uh, sorry, not filters, sorry, sensors. Uh, you've got some places, you've got CO2 sensors. Um, some areas in chemical plants, you have some rooms which are like, you know, your master rooms or your safe zones, if you want to call it. Uh, they have uh, your oxygen sensors or your poisonous gas sensors, which are linked to alarms. So that's probably what we're going to be looking at in the future in terms of air monitoring. So because obviously we, as, as it says there, we believe that our responsibility is to protect the environment. That's the bottom line, you know. Um, we, you know, we certify our factories even with green heart um, technology or green green star technology, um, and you know, using only energy from the renewable sources. Um, obviously, trying to decrease the drastic emission and waste. You know, that's our that's our that's our aim. Um, 
So yeah, so all this build up uh, led to led to a point. I, I hope everybody understands where we are at it um, in terms of the indoor air quality and what we want to try and achieve. So we've got a certain products, there are certain or certain range of products that start from large commercial to to um, to smaller areas for for like maybe small offices or such if you want to call it. Um, so I'll go through the products and, and and yeah, hopefully you guys hopefully you guys are all uh, aware of it and and see the need for it. So you got your professional kit, um, which 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 does quite high air volumes, more for your large commercial buildings. Uh, your modular R, uh, so sorry, and the professional one is customized. So depending on your plant room spaces, you can make it higher, wider, thinner, fatter, longer, whatever the case is. Uh, the modular R, uh, we can also we can also customize that if I'm not mistaken. Um, but they 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 restrict it to to a certain to a certain flow rate. Uh, your modular P, your modular L, and your VAM, which you can use for small commercial or small offices or or a singular hall. So, so, so give me a second. OK, so let's kick off with the modular R and P just to go back. That is the first two. Oh, sorry, the, the second and third. Sorry, sorry, the second and third. So what does it come with? Um, obviously it comes with the. High efficiency filter. Right. Uh, we'll come back to the filtration in terms of how you select them. Well, well, I've showed you earlier how you select them. So you can select them based on your needs. So um, you'll, you, you'll see you'll see the slides coming up, right? So you got your liquid uh, gasket technology, right? Uh, which uh, in a, which which drastically enhance the air tightness performance. The you got your flush inner surface, right? And you got your internal internal round profile. Why is the round profile so important in this day and age, especially since COVID hit us, is that it's easier to clean. Do yourself a favor. Look at look at a rounded edge and try and clean it. Look for one somewhere in your house, and look for a corner. You'll notice in the corners there's always dirt build up, and it's the most difficult to to clean. So when everything is rounded along the whole air handling unit, it makes it much easier to clean. OK, so. This one here, where, where you can you, we've got two options. You can make it. We have them made to stock where they stand out. So those are sort of like emergency jobs uh, and you got your made to order, right? Uh, you you've got two forms of two stage filtration on it. So. When you're looking at your filters, you can look at your either your coarse filters or you could look at your you can even look at HEPA filters if you need to. Right, depending on what your actual requirements are. So, as you can see, um, you can select if you were happy that you would want 50% efficiency on your PM1 filter. You can select it for that, um, as you can see. Uh, and and even if you were if you if you were happy just eliminating PM PM10 particles, you could even do that. Uh, you could select an EPM10 for 75% efficiency. Or if you, or if you're in an area where, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the application where you have a lot of dust particles out, and maybe you're burning something, or, or you're in a plant, or whatever the case is, and you have a lot of ash where you're building, where, where you're pulling in your air, you could have a coarse filter first, and then maybe a uh, a PM10 or a PM1. You know, it's just it's just really dependent on your on your application. So the so the DA choose um, as as I explained, customized solutions. They tailor made basically uh, to your to your needs. You got your you got your delivered flow rates, and you got a plug and play control solution. Do you normally use these ones in uh, ph ph pharmaceutical areas, oil and gas, which is also plant, uh, your hospitals and data centers. You know the the areas that sort of have uh, like data centers need to be. Uh, as free of dust as possible. You know, pharmaceutical pharmaceuticals also same story. Uh, oils and gas areas or plants need clear, clean air um, in their safe zones. And obviously, hospital now since we've 
that is outbreak of COVID, they're looking at as uh, they they normally look for the HEPA filtration uh, as to what as to what they actually uh, accept. The modular R and P same very similar. You can do almost the same thing with it. It just comes in a smaller range. Um, it's a plug and play solution, so you don't customize it. Um, and you're looking at maybe for comfort cooling, warehousing, offices, hotel areas. Um, sorry, sorry, you can also have them um, produced for you uh, at that capacity range. Um, uh, custom made, sorry, uh, because it would depend, they would size and relevant fans. Uh, depending on what sort of static pressures you're looking at, especially if you're looking at HEPA filters. Um, you know, some AHUs could have, you might need an external also of, uh, of 400, 500 pascals, um, and you might have an internal of about 350 uh, pascals, depending on the case, so uh, you can custom make that also. So these, these, um, these are not custom made. These are these are standard solutions. Uh, they actually look quite neat, especially uh, when your architect or your interior designer is looking for a more industrial style office uh, where it's exposed with no ceilings. It's quite a neat looking unit. Um, as you can see in the image there, it's got like a nice, uh, what do I say? It's like a chroma deck or like a, or like a high, or like a high fine paint finish. Um, but but yeah, it looks it looks quite nice in person. Uh, in, sorry, in, in physically when you see it, um, and yeah, you normally use this for offices. You can hire commercial. You could even use this in houses, depending on how big your house is. Um, so that's the flow rates that we normally look at achieving. And even with these, you can you can depending on you can even choose your folder that you use. Um, but we'll go into more detail on this just now. And then and then you've got your VAM. Um, your VAM you'd use obviously for like your light commercial offices. I haven't told you for houses. I mean, you could do this for one house. You could use one VAM unit for one house itself, like a four or five bedroom house. Um, only thing is you restrict it on the static pressure. Um, you can't really put HEPA filters on it. Um, you're looking at, I would say, I would say even if you're looking at an EPM 170%, um, you don't, if you eat the, the bigger filter you're putting in, uh, the less static you're going to have down of your uh, also, uh, from from your spigot to your relevant uh, points in your house. So it's also dependent uh, theoretically on 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 what you're on is everything's application dependent. So what you um, what you lose on the swings you make on the roundabouts, you know. Um, so focusing more on the modular L because this is actually, um, in my opinion. Uh, one of the best models to use for, uh, and that's quite robust. That's quite um, easy to easy to um, manipulate in ceiling voids. Uh, also, in terms of in terms of uh, flexibility, design flexibility. Um, you know, you can there's certain items that are plug and play that you can change uh, to what you actually have. So, one of the advantages you've got your premium efficiency counter, flow heat exchanger, right? You've got filters which you can choose, as I explained, your G4, your M5, F7, F9. You've got two-state filtration on it. Um, you've got your EC centrifugal plug fans on it, right? Uh, your pre-painted art, ah, that's an aluminium, uh, alu-zinc material um, uh, with your mineral wool. And you have your flange connections, which are shown there. And you have your bypass damper. So, detail on this. So this is what a planned uh, schematic view looks like. So like, for example, on your on your fresh air, right? Um, uh, you could you could have on filter A, as you can see, you can have a G4, M5, F7, depending on what your requirement is. And your filter B can be an F7 or an F9, right? Your second, your, your, your primary filter normally, you use it for catching your bigger particles, right? So uh, normally you would use maybe an M5 on it, and your and your secondary filter normally you'd use about an F7 on item B, um, and that's your fresh air coming in from the outside, right? Now, on your return air itself, right? Because remember now you've got four points of entry and exit. Because what this is doing, it is creating air changes 
within the space, right? But at the same time, it's also filtering the new air coming in from outside, thereby saving you energy, number one, right? And number two, still maintaining a, a, a clean or a good quality of air coming into your space. And like if you look at the return air, depending, depending on your application, I mean, you could be in a clothing factory, for example, um, you would need on filter C, you'd need the F7 filter or F9 filter. Um, and you'd need maybe an M5 on your D filter. Um, whereas if you're sitting in a standard office with a standard occupancy of one person per 10 squares, you can get away with a G4 on filter D and you don't even need to really put a filter on filter C, right? So it's, it's really depending on your application um, and your judgment as an engineer or an AC contractor or a service and maintenance uh, company uh, to decide on what exactly you actually want. Yes, yeah, so looking at looking at the rural areas, looking at the city areas, industrial areas, you know, we're just looking looking at the classifications of the outdoor airs. And yeah, surprisingly, the rural areas are uh, well, not surprisingly, but the they they count as a low pollution uh, level area, whereas the industrial area is classed as a high pollution area. So this is your this is a different um, classifications. You get sub one, sub two, sub three, sub four, sub four being the highest. So filters and the minimum filtration efficiency based on the particle of the outdoor air quality now. So when you are looking at sizing filters, right? I know not sizing filters, but selecting filters, you got to be careful, right? So you got to first understand what's the classification of your air. So let's take, for example, a So the value of the Daikin filter as per the ISO standard, right? So remember what I told you about the efficiencies. If you're using an M5, which is class for a PM10 at 75%, it's only going to stop 44% of, of uh, particle matters one, right? So it cannot be rated to stop that. So if your aim is to not have any particle matter one, this is going to fail, right? Your F7 will be acceptable right at for a pm1 at 50 percent the reason is because it, it can stop about 50 percent of the contaminants right so it really just depends on your on your um, application some areas where there's high concentration of gases you could some people may even need a gas filtration so let's try and understand um, the filters versus the indoor air quality and, and what we are actually comparing. So in a rural area, you only need basically a one stage filter to achieve a sub two, which still has contaminants, right? <coughs> Excuse me. If you add an M5, which is rated for 75% at PM10, you can achieve sub one, which is sort of what you want to achieve in a space, right? So sub one, is what you want to achieve. So using an M5 at, at a PM10 75 and an F7 at a PM1 of 50 would achieve sub one. In a city, if you just use an F7, you can achieve 50% of a PM1, and you got to add an M5, which is rated at 75% to PM10 to achieve sub two. And you're going to use an F9 filter or a PM1 at 80% efficiency to achieve sub one. Take industrial areas, right? You've got to use an M5 or an M7 with an F7 to achieve sub three with a 50% PM1. You got to use to achieve sub two. You've got to use an F9 and a PM1 at 80%. And to achieve sub one, you've got to use two stage F filters, one F7 at 50% and an F9 at 80%. So why not just put an F9 for everything? It's because it becomes expensive. The more resistance you create on your system, 
the more energy you're going to draw, the bigger size your equipment needs to be. So that's where engineering comes into the picture. You don't uh, select uh, something by over engineering it, right? Because we we in we in a uh, need or, or we have the need or and we in the economical situation where uh, we want to size something to do the job. Nobody has money for extra capacity or extra redundancy. Um, it just becomes unaffordable. And this is where the rise of value engineering has come into uh, the play over the past uh, 30 to 40 years. So, to, to, because one of the questions I was asked is why not just put a F, two F9 filters? And that's the reason. It's because you would oversize your equipment, right? You create additional resistance and you'll, and you'll draw more energy. So basically looking at the combinations of it and the minimum standard filtration. So um, if you're looking at the outdoor air quality for situation one uh, and you want to achieve sub two, which is which <laughs> uh, which which you would need to, um, that's using F7s. So our offer, um, Daikon, um, we offer as a standard F7 up to an F7 plus a F9 option. So if you really wanted a high level of filtration, you can put an F7 plus an F9. And we only use the G4 filters as an option and only for first stage of filtration. So the whole point is taking care of our planet, taking care of our community and ourselves. Daikon can help you on improving your air, uh, indoor air quality and we need to do more together and we have to do it for our children and for the sustainability of the human race and stay safe stay at home thank you and uh, just to just to also put an input here we also have uh, air purifiers uh, daikon air purifiers which um, which i think there is a video on our daikon page uh with the that it has, it has flash streamer technology uh, which you can see in terms of the studies were done I can't remember the numbers exactly, but it sort of, I think, after three hours of exposure, it eliminated 99,9% .9 of the virus. And after uh, one hour, it eliminated, I think, 93,5 or 93,4% of the virus. Uh, just have a look at it. There are other videos. And yeah, thank you for your time. Goodbye.